Friedman. Here. And a revolving agency. Agency members Friedman. Here. Najarian. Here. Quintero. Here. Weaver. Here. Chairman Ukin. Let me hear your report, please. The agenda for the January 24, 2012 Joint Public Meeting of the City Council and the Redevelopment Agency was posted on Thursday, January 19, 2012 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Before you today in this Joint Public Meeting is the Director of Community Development regarding adoption of the Enforceable uh, Obligation Payment Schedule, EOPS, and creation of the Redevelopment Obligation Retirement Fund, RORF, Agency Resolution Adopting EOPS, uh, at 1A and at 1B is council resolution authorizing creation of the ROF. Thank you. We're going to Mr. Lanzapain. Ms. Mayor, members of the City Council, Mr. Chairman, members of the Redevelopment Agency, uh, Mr. Manukian, as you noted, this may be a historic moment, uh, and this could be the last item that you consider uh, as the Glendale Redevelopment Agency. Uh, the item before you is uh, approval of the what's called the Enforceable Obligation Payment Schedule. Uh, this is required uh, of agencies under AB 26, the uh, recent legislation uh, that was upheld that dissolves all redevelopment agencies in the state of California. It is very similar to the schedule that you adopted last August. On it, it is all of the payments that the agency, the obligations that we have, and payments that we would need to make going forward as the successor agency. It is critically important that we have all of those payments because it will be this schedule and then one that follows it that will dictate how much money we get as something like an allowance to pay for our, our obligations going forward. We will get tax distributions uh, in May and June of this year to pay for some of these obligations. And then every year thereafter, we'll get them June, uh, I'm sorry, January 16th and then June 1st. So we'll be looking at our obligations in six month blocks going forward until all of our obligations are paid off. For that reason, we've been very thorough as, as much as we can. Uh, and while some of the law is unclear, uh, we've tried to make assumptions, um, reasonable assumptions, and include every single payment that we might have to make. Um, we are getting information every day and, and literally every hour. I just left a conference call uh, where we're getting advice from, from different counsel uh, as well as our own legal counsel. So what you received was a draft of the, of the uh, uh, statement, the, the uh, schedule in your packets. We have recently distributed to you just today uh, a revised uh, statement, uh, and, and I'll go over some of that in just a minute. But I want to let you know that um, this is difficult for you. It is, is difficult for, for all of us in all redevelopment in California. We're in uncharted territory. Nobody really knows exactly how this is supposed to work. Uh, the law is unclear. Uh, it has timing issues. Uh, for instance, you are supposed to adopt a payment schedule. You are supposed to have it approved by your oversight board uh, by March 1st, but the oversight boards are not put together until May 1st. So there's some timing issues, and we'll just need to work through those uh, as we go forward. Um, there are some, uh, that's a mechanics issue, but there are some, some real concerns. Uh, in things like payment of bond obligations. Uh, we, as I noted, will get distributions every six months. We may have a bond payment due before our next distribution. So we'll need to double up on, on the, the prior schedule, which is the one you're looking at now. In looking at this, I, I, I heard the city manager use a metaphor and I thought it was pretty good. We're building a boat while we're in the water. And so we're asking for a little bit of patience uh, and, and a, whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of discretion on your part um, to include some of these things that just aren't clear. Uh, and we hope that they will become more clear. We will be bringing you schedules very frequently uh, in the next few months. Uh, and so we'll have time to make some adjustments if they're warranted. The categories of, of payments on the schedule uh, that you have before you, they fall into several broad categories. Uh, payment of bond debt, the city's loan, the payment of the, the city loan to the redevelopment agency, pass-through payments. We will still be required to pass through uh, property tax to other taxing entities like the county and the school district. Those will take a priority position. 
then you will have the recognized obligations that we have on the schedule. Those are the projects that we uh, that are deemed enforceable obligations or what will be called recognizable obligations. Uh, we believe that the housing set aside uh, is something that we will still be obligated to do, uh, and that will be that will play out more as legislation that that makes housing clear uh, works its way through the legislature. Currently, a, uh, SB 654 uh, is in front of the legislature for consideration. And finally, there will be an administrative budget to help pay for uh, the various um, activities that will be needed to unwind the redevelopment agency. Um, I wanted to just very, in some very broad terms, again, point out the revisions uh, on the schedule before you. Uh, we have added the pension obligations that are currently um, the responsibility of the city. They're funded by the redevelopment agency. We've put those on this schedule uh, so that the city wouldn't become liable for those, and, and that's a, a great deal of money. Um, and before I go any further, I should note, the schedule is broken down in three pages. The first is central, the second is San Fernando Road, or two project areas, and then the third is, is housing. Um, specific to Central, uh, I noted the pension obligations. We've included some additional debt service to make up for that payment that will be due before distributions. Uh, we have put on some, some projects that we believe, public projects, uh, that we believe will be important um, to, to go forward, namely uh, expanding the City Hall uh, campus uh, for um, some of the uh, uh, community development functions as well as public counters. Uh, we've included, uh, in one of our projects, we had, uh, as part of its environmental review, we noted that the agency had adopted a policy of setting aside uh, tax increment for parks and libraries. We have included that obligation as we believe uh, it is an obligation mandated by the environmental impact report. Um, and then, as I noted, we've added the 20% set aside. Uh, so these are, are some of the areas where we've changed the schedule. Um, if you want uh, any specifics, we can go line by line, but, but that gives you a general idea. Finally, uh, going forward, you, um, uh, we had included in our staff report a matrix of the actions that the agency will have to take. I, I know in my packet it, it was missing, and I don't think it got on the website, so we've uh, placed one at each of your... Uh, uh, at each of your desks there uh, in case it was not in your packet. Going forward though, the next couple of things that, um, that I'd like to note are uh, either the end of this month or the first part of next month, uh, we will be asking you to make appointments to the Oversight Board. Uh, as we've noted before, the city has two selections, um, that one of which needs to be from the bargaining unit most represented by the agency, which in this case is the Glendale Managers Association. Um, and then there's an at-large uh, selection. And then uh, sometime in mid-February, we'll be coming... Sorry. Uh, Lundell Management Association gets a seat at the table? Is what? Lundell, Lundell Management Association gets a seat in that successor agency? But the way that the law reads is... The way that one. the law reads is one of the selections the needs to be... The Oversight Board. I'm sorry, the Oversight Board. I'm sorry, but I'm, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. One, one of the selections for the oversight board is supposed to be an employee of the bargaining unit that is most represented by agency employees. In Glendale's case, that's the Glendale Management Association. Keeping in mind that Not the Management the Association is managers as well as technical professional folks. So the project managers, the analysts, it isn't as though everybody in the redevelopment agency is a management employee. They just fall to the management group referred to as Glendale Management Association. The majority of them are going to be your project managers and analysts. Uh, but that is the largest single bargaining group that is covered by the redevelopment agency. And so the, the bone that was thrown to organized labor by uh, the state was that we will give a seat at the table to the soon-to-be unemployed members of that bargaining group. So when they're, even if they're unemployed, or do we have to pick someone who's an active employee? So somebody uh, that isn't, that will, at this point will be an active employee. Active. But if, if this plays out, ultimately, 
they Anybody. could very well end up working themselves out of a job. But wait a minute, so, but then or, they won't be a member of that union anymore. It, I, think it's, I think they're looking backward, so whether you are still employed by the successor agency, by the city, or if you're unemployed, but still in the community. And there's no conflict there? It was set up that way. It was set up that way to provide that representation. If you recall to the discussions about 1X or AB, what it became AB 26, um, there, uh, the, the state had, had uh, moved in this direction and there, the pendulum swung the other way from organized uh, labor, the employee associations, saying, wait a second, if you do what you're intending to do, that will uh, impact a number of folks who have traditionally supported some of the members uh, who were advancing this legislation. And so uh, the politics of the Capitol being what they were, they backtracked it a little bit and uh, provided two seats at this oversight committee for the local uh, agency, one of which being reserved for members of that bargaining group. And so the other seat goes to the mayor or no, someone no. like that? No. Well, they're, they're a mayor appointment, but it would be our suggestion we bring that item forward. And so it would be from? It was my understanding it couldn't be one of us. It, no, could, it, it could, could be. be. It could there, be. The other one could be. Um, they are uncompensated, and so it will be a, an additional meeting that you would have to attend somewhere. But we they, will bring. It doesn't even tell you where. So, uh, we, we will. Sorry, Phil, we're just. Quite all right. Disrupting. It's gallows you. humor, is right. what it is. I, I appreciate that, and, and um, I, I want to apologize as well. We've been living with this for, for a few weeks now, and um, some things that uh, we take a shorthand, uh, we re need to realize that you don't. Uh, the second item that you will hear. Uh, Phil, is one more question. So each agency basically has this type of uh, panel. Yes, sir. So there are going to be how many agencies statewide? How many panels? Well, there's 400 agencies, so there will be four. There will be 400 oversight boards. Those will be, by 2016, those will be reduced to one per county. So there will be one oversight board for all of the agencies in Los Angeles County, San Diego, Orange, Ventura, the rest. By 2016? By 2016. So I believe it's in June 2016. Uh, and then finally, the last, uh, the, the next item will be what's called a recognized obligation payment schedule. Um, quite baffling. You, have, you will have adopted three or four of these schedules. They're all very similar. Um, this one will, will account for the next two months. The next one that you adopt will be from June going forward, and then every six months you'll be adopting one of these until the agency is, is completed. We'll be bringing that, which is it's kind of the, the, end, uh, uh, the end final recognizing all obligations in mid-February. Understanding that, that um, the successor agency, which would be this council, would adopt this, with some uh, over, oversight from the oversight committee with yet another layer of review from the Department of Finance. And those dominoes can be stood back up if the Department of Finance objects to some of the actions that are being taken. Who's going to be overseeing the Department of Finance? You asked that question before, question. and we do not have an answer. The man behind the curtain, effectively. Okay. So if, if there are no other questions, staff's recommendation is that you adopt this. We'll then post it to our website. We'll send it off to the auditor controller uh, in accordance with all of the directions uh, in AB 26. Okay. We have a motion. We have an agency and a council motion. So I'll move uh, 1B, council res resolution authorizing the creation of ROF. Second. Okay, we have a roll call. We have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Council members Manukian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Friedman? Yes. I just have a comment. Uh, I'll move the next item for the uh, agency. Second. Um, second. Just to, um, I guess, just to let uh, my colleagues know and perhaps the public um, know where the, the winds appear to be blowing. Uh, on this item, we had a San Fernando Valley Council of Government 
uh, special emergency meeting to, uh, to permit our executive director to write a letter to, uh, in support of the Padilla bill, which would extend this unwinding of the redevelopment. The uh, San Fernando Valley COG must have complete unanimity, unanimity uh, before any action is taken. Uh, clearly, uh, many of us thought that this is something that all uh, elected officials from the different components of our COG would support. Uh, but no, there were two, I don't want to say who they were, but two significant members from opposing uh, political parties um, stated their objections to uh, sending a letter requesting uh, that the uh, Padilla bill be supported. Ouch. I mean, that surprises me. Uh, the next is something I heard um, secondhand from a, uh, it was firsthand from a member of the L.A., not from the L.A. City Council, but an elected member that uh, is in, in the top level of L.A. City government. Uh, Governor Brown had a meeting with them uh, about the redevelopment, and despite the urging of the L.A. City Council and the other members to uh, permit this to continue and support the Padilla bill and look for some way to unwind this. Governor's words were something like, uh, uh, it's in no one's best interest to, to uh, delay the funeral. The body only begins to stink more. So uh, just to let you know, the gover governor is very adamantly uh, committed to just wiping, obliterating redevelopment as soon as possible. So, so any bills that will pass will most likely be vetoed. Is that what you're saying? I think that's it, unless it's In clear. In my opinion, that's true as yeah. well. But. Unless it's clear that there's enough votes to override, but the whole, um, that the anecdote about two of our local um, electeds on both sides of the aisle against any sort of extension of redevelopment came as a surprise to me. I thought um, this is almost a no-brainer. I mean, the word no-brainer was in my mind. Who wouldn't support a little bit of extra time to unwind this? But there are some uh, forces out there on both sides that just uh, are, I guess they hold redevelopment in disdain. And there's really been, I think, a bad public relations effort on the part of uh, whether it's the CRA or, or cities themselves to really, and we read that when we read our paper. I mean, there's a lot of comments of people who think redevelopment is just uh, a waste of money, uh, another cash cow that we raid. But um, I think people don't understand it, and a lot of elected officials aren't ready to, to go the line and, and support the winding, a ordered winding down and a recreation in some other form. Just wanted to let you guys know what I had heard. My motion, my motion still stands. There is a motion and a second for the agency, the resolution adopting EOPS. So uh, let's have a roll call for the agency, please. Agency members, Friedman? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Chairman Nukin? Yes. That is it for the agency. Do we have a motion to adjourn for, for the agency? the agency. Second. We have a move to, do we have a motion to adjourn for the council? So moved. Second. Council is adjourned.